In this video, you will learn how to screen for visceral pain from organ tracts, which can mask as thoracic pain. Enroll in our online course now. Link is in the video description. Hi, and welcome back to Physio Tutors. One of the major challenges for a clinician seeing patients with low back pain is determining the source of the symptoms. Even though we know that 90% of low back pain is aspecific and we cannot accurately determine a source of nociception, we will have to rule out serious pathology first. One such source that is often overlooked but that has to be ruled out during your screening process are true and referred visceral pain. True visceral pain arises as a poorly defined sensation, usually perceived in the midline of the body, at the lower sternum or upper abdomen. This diffuse nature and difficulty in locating visceral pain is due to a low density of visceral sensory innervation and extensive divergence of visceral input within the central nervous system. Visceral pain is therefore perceived more diffusely than noxious cutaneous stimulation with respect to location and timing. Subsequent symptoms may entail referred pain to somatic structures that share the same segmental innervation and that are more densely innervated. This way, visceral referred pain can mask as pain from musculoskeletal structures. We have linked a video in the top right corner that digs deeper into the neurophysiological mechanism behind this phenomenon. Sikanda et al. in the year 2012 point out that somatic pain can be distinguished from visceral pain as the latter is often associated with marked motor and autonomic reflexes including pallor, profuse sweating, nausea, GI disturbances and changes in body temperature, blood pressure and heart rate and at the same time it often produces strong affective responses and therefore can be reinforced by anxiety and depression. So which organs have their segmental innervation in the thoracic spine and can potentially refer pain to the mid and upper back? These are the following. In case a patient complains about radiating symptoms along the ulnar side of the arm, mimicking C8 radiculopathy or ulnar nerve entrapment is a pancoast tumor. For the cardiovascular system, you could ask the following items. Questions you could ask for the pulmonary system are the following. The organs of the digestive system generally refer pain to the thoracic spine with the exception of the large intestine, sigmoid colon and esophagus. During your interview, you could ask for the following things. You can imagine that some of these questions are very straightforward and private and probably not what a new patient expects during the intake. For this reason, it's important to explain why you are asking these questions. In our experience, it makes sense to start with more general questions. For example, do you have abdominal pain? And then dig deeper with the more specific questions if the initial questions were positive. 
A more general tract that is often overlooked as it is not specific to a certain area is the locomotor tract. If the patient describes insidious onset of symptoms in multiple joints, the therapist should be wary of the presence of inflammatory disorders such as rheumatoid arthritis or systemic lupus, etc., as opposed to multiple areas exhibiting pure mechanical musculoskeletal dysfunction. Questions you could ask for the locomotor tract are if there is pain, swelling or movement restriction in other joints in the body next to the joint the patient is primarily complaining about. At last, there are a couple of general evaluation principles that will help you to distinguish visceral pain or visceral referred pain from musculoskeletal pain. These are number one, pain from musculoskeletal structures can be related to a change in body or limb position or to specific movements. So if the symptoms do not vary regardless of body position and movement and are present at rest, especially if the pain is most severe waking them up at night, a pathological disorder should be suspected. Two, we have already mentioned that visceral pain is described to be poorly localized, diffuse, dull and vague in character. It can be constant but may rhythmically build up to a peak and then recede. Sensations of cramping pain have been attributed to spasm of the muscle wall of the hollow viscous and have been described in gastroenteritis, constipation, menstruation, gallbladder disease and ureteral obstruction. 3. The behavior of symptoms from visceral organs will vary depending on the function of the organ. They might thus be related to eating habits or ingestion of certain foods, may occur with bowel or bladder fullness or constipation, or be associated with the actual acts of urination or defecation. 4. Contrary to musculoskeletal pain in which patients often report an incident, accident or trauma marking the onset of complaints, a serious pathology might be suspected in case of an insidious onset with unexplained symptom development. 5. Questions about general health may also reveal critical information. Signs and symptoms like fever, chills, nausea, unexplained weight loss, malaise, vomiting, changes in bowel habits or rectal and vaginal bleeding for more than one or two weeks might be an indicator of a more serious pathology. Make sure that you are aware of conditions that the patient is currently treated for or has been treated for in the past as many can have a history of recurrence and ask for family history as well. Six, last, patient information including age, gender, occupation and ethnicity may place people at higher risk for the development of specific diseases. Be aware that no single question allows you to reach a conclusion. What we are looking for is a pattern that might indicate serious pathology. It has to be said that you are not trying to make a specific diagnosis for certain organ pathology here. This is out of the scope of a physio and the expertise of an MD. The message that we want to bring across here is that it should become routine to include screening for visceral pathology during your screening process as well. So you can refer out if serious pathology is suspected. Okay, this was our video on screening for visceral pathology for the mid and upper back. If you are curious about screening for visceral pathology referring to the neck and shoulder, click on the video right next to me. Videos like this and much more can be found on our soon to be released online course on the spine on our webpage study.physiotutors.com. As always, thanks a lot for watching. This was Kai for Physiotutors. See you.